Hello Chargers, I'm Ashley Oaks. And I'm Sarah Rasmussen. Here on today's May 2nd installment of DP News. Volunteer opportunities. Class officers. And more. There are only 27 days left of school chargers and APIB tests are among us. But right now, you're watching DP, DP News. News. Here's Scotty G with info about after prom and a special drawing for those who bought their tickets early. Good morning, DP. This is Scotty G reporting to you today on after prom. If you were smart enough to buy your after prom tickets last Thursday, you were able to get the special early bird special for $12 and get eight chances to get your name in this box. This box is filled only with senior names and we will be pulling names out of this box all night long at after prom. After prom is at Zodos and the doors open as soon as prom ends at midnight and goes all the way till 4 a.m. If you're there till the very end, your name will be in this box and we will be drawing 12 grand prizes that are a value of $100 or more with a grand prize of $500 cash being given out that night. Today at lunch and the rest of this week, we will be selling after prom tickets outside of the athletics office. There is also a tournament for the best poker player here at DP. So if you are one of those poker players, you want to sign up for the Texas Hold'em Tournament right when you're buying your tickets for After Prom. There is no additional cost to be part of the Texas Hold'em Tournament, and the final six players will all win prizes with someone winning the grand prize of the bracelet stating that they are the DPHS 2016 Tournament of Champions. So sign up for After Prom. Tickets are $15, and you still get eight chances to get your name in this box if you buy your tickets this week. If you wait till next week, tickets will be $15, but you'll only get six chances to get tickets. And if you wait until you're at the door, tickets go up to $20, and you only have two chances to win. So we have some early bird winners, and they can claim their prize today at lunch in P2. And the first winner is Travis Craven. And the second winner is Malia Morales. And the next winner is Jessica Delgadillo. And the next winner is Bei Tang Guo. And the next winner is Anna Ochoa. And the next winner is Trey Klopstein. And the next winner is Caitlin Paredes. So if your name was called, come to P2 today at lunch and claim your early bird prize. We'll be getting early bird prizes out all this week. So get your name in the box so I can call your name. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks, Scott. Now here's a video about what's happening here on Wednesday. Wednesday, May 4th is Bike to School Day. You can win prizes and raffle tickets. And come here for the raffle drawing in the Greek on Wednesday. Now let's go talk to some students to find out what they think. Okay. <laughs> Man, I love biking. It's so good for the environment. Biking is great exercise and good for your legs. I get to have fun and win prizes. <laughs> Who needs a helmet? Hey, Clay! Everyone needs a helmet. You're going to jail. Remember, bike to school and you'll be entered in a drawing to win awesome prizes at lunch. Also, be safe and avoid the cops. <laughs> service hours are due Friday May 20th but you don't have to be a senior to participate in these awesome community service opportunities the Santa Barbara Central Library is seeking volunteers for their youth services homework program teens interested in helping elementary school students will with reading and homework will need to attend a one and a half hour training to prepare for this opportunity the next training will be held on Saturday May 21st from 1 to 2 30 p.m. and will take place in the island room of the Santa Barbara Central Library for more information and qualifications expectations and shift hours please call the SB library and request to speak to the children's desk volunteers are also needed for the Mountain View Elementary School Carnival on May 6th 
The carnival runs from 3 to 6, but it would be appreciated if volunteers arrived at 2.30 and stayed until 6.30 for setup and cleanup. For more information, please contact Lisa Williams at lisa.williams at gmail.com. Did you ever have a teddy bear or special toy or a blanket that helped you comfort you while growing up? I know I had some bunny or... Most of us did. Those of you who didn't may have wished for one, and, and if so, that makes you even more important to hear this message. Children who have experienced a great loss from natural disasters like hurricanes and tsunamis, or political traumas like 9-11, or as a refugee from war, are in need of a hug and especially in need of hope. That's what bear hugs bring in the form of teddy bears with tagged messages from the donor. Children who lost their smile find it again in a simple form of a teddy bear with a message of hope and caring. You can become a youth leader for this project by joining the team. You'll also get community service hours and make a direct impact on children living in fear and without homes. Email Robin Isich at lisich at gmail.com or check out their website at coeworld.org. The State Street National Car Show is looking for about 25 volunteers to help out on Saturday, May 14th from 12 to 5 p.m. All volunteers will receive a free commemorative tea for their, first, for their time and event itself. Sounds like a blast. For more information, please contact Steve Cowsons at stevecow1 at yahoo.com. A big congratulations to Conrad Kuklinski, Dustin Oaks, Maya Reese, and Catherine Wang from our very own DP Econ Challenge team who finished in fifth place overall at the national semifinals competition. The team worked incredibly hard and well together and just missed the opportunity to fish in the finish in the final four and compete for the national championship in New York next month. A second huge congratulation to DP's club robotics team, Team 5818 Riviera Robotics, who recently competed against the best robots from all around the world, winning six and losing four matches. Unfortunately, they did not make it into the playoff round, but their hard work sure did pay off. Well, Chargers, the votes are in. The winners for sophomore class office are President Justin Juarez, VP McKenna Grant, and Secretary Ginger Vance. There are still two vacancies for sophomore class office, treasurer and historian, and if you are interested in running for either of those empty positions, come into P2 Tuesday at lunch. Meanwhile, the winners for the junior class office are President Perry Hernandez, Vice President Jack Guntag, Secretary Eric Nisich, Treasurer Dan Willett, and, and Historian Gabby Hussling. And finally, your winners for your senior class office next year are President Cara Portier, Vice President Josh Feldhaus, Secretary Sienna Wagner, Treasurer Ellie Cutcliffe, and there will be a runoff on Tuesday, May 3rd during third period between Stephanie Lopez Inda and Anya Schmitz. Please note that those ballots will only be for classes with current juniors going to be seniors. Juniors Adriana Tuvazares and Emma York will be holding a fundraiser to raise awareness for people with invisible disabilities on Saturday, May 7th from 2.30 to 4 in the Hall of St. Santa Barbara Greek Orthodox Church. All proceeds will be donated to the Invisible Disabilities Association. Come show your support by participating in various activities or donating to the cause. That's all your campus news today. DP now sending it over to Jeffrey with the sports. And Dallas. Hello, I'm Dallas. And I'm Jeffrey, here with your weekend sports report. On Friday, our baseball team had a home league match against San Marcos. Our boys dominated the Royals, winning with a score of 7-0. Sophomore Dylan Kelly started the game and pitched four innings, giving up only two hits. Peter Apple pitched the next two innings of relief and having two hits for himself and two runs scored. Then closer Austin Bull pitched the seventh inning with two strikeouts. Colter Nisbet went two for three with three RBIs. Our boys are now first in league with a 5-3 record in league and a 15-7 record overall. They play at home today against San Marcos at 3, so be sure to go out and watch our baseball team. Also on Friday, our softball team traveled away to face Crosstown rival San Marcos for a league match. Our second-ranking CIF team beat the Royals 11-5 and are 7-2 in Channel League. Both Sienna Wagner and Gabby Gandal went 3-4 for four with Wagner driving in three runs and Gandal with one. Gandal herself gave up five runs while also striking out five batters. Madison Pickett with three for th went 3-4 five with a RBI. Anya Schmitz went two for three with two RBIs and Ali Milam drove in with two runs and on Saturday our softball team traveled away to participate in the Thousand Oaks tournament. Our girls played hard in their first match and lost against Hart but in their second match they beat Pacifica. Great job girls. And dive heads over to Ventura High today for the Channel League 
Wish our divers good luck. And on the side note, our girls lacrosse team was seated second in Division Two CIF Southern Section and have a game tomorrow against Lorena High at home. Come and so show your support. That's all for your sports report. Now over to Ann Bailey with your current events. Good morning, Chargers. Union members around the world marched for workers' rights yesterday, May 1st, also known as May Day. According to the Washington Post, hundreds of May Day demonstrators took to the streets of Los Angeles to demand more rights for workers and immigrants. This is only one of many rallies in the United States to call for better wages for workers and an end to deportations. Marchers also spoke out against hateful speech targeting immigrants, workers, and women following remarks made by leading Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. According to the Los Angeles Times, Trump unified the protesters in downtown LA by having offended them with the things he said. In one particular rally, the candidate took the form of a giant balloon carrying a Ku Klux Klan hood. That's all for today, DP. I'm Ann Bailey. Thanks for tuning in.